So let us talk about uh, satellites. We'll see the history, how satellite works, satellite uh, frequency bands and antennas, orbit distance, pros and cons and applications of satellites, and four types of uh, satellites, uh, LEOs, MEOs, GPS and GEOs, and then satellite tracking system, JTracker and JPAS. So let us start with history of satellites, the first satellites. Uh, the theory of satellite was uh, simple enough, shooting something in, out into space at the right speed and on the correct trajectory and to stay up there, it will not come down, it will just rotate on, uh, you know, take revolutions. Now, orbiting Earth for years, if not forever, if the Earth is in the right distance in space, the satellite will keep pace with the rotation of the Earth. Pioneer Satellites, 1957. Early in October 1957, communications stations started picking up a regular beeping noise coming from space. So the signal were coming from actually a Russian Sputnik, the world's first man-made satellite. This is often uh, asked question, uh, which is the first satellite? This is Russian Sputnik. So it was January 1958 before a Jupiter rocket successfully launch Explorer 1, the first American satellite. So first Russian was Sputnik, it was in 1957, then in 1958 it was Explorer 1 from America. Then uh, NASA's SYNCOM program, 1963, GEOS. So in July 1963, the Hughes Aircraft Corporation launched the Experiment SYNCOM 2 for NASA. SYNCOM 2. The world first geosynchronous uh, communication satellite, its easiest uh, earlier sister, uh, Syncom 1, had been blow up on launch earlier that year. But the second version was a huge success, right? Syncom 1 failed, Syncom 2 succeeded. So it carried the first live two way satellite call uh, between heads of state when President Kennedy uh, telephoned Nigerian Prime Minister uh, in Africa. So the third Syncom satellite transmitted live television coverage of the 1964 Olympic Games from Tokyo. So this was the history. Then came Early World, 1965. The world's first commercial communication satellite was Early World, first commercial communication. So it was built for the communication satellite corporate Comsat by Hughes. So the satellite was launched in April 6, 1965 and placed in commercial service after moving into geosynchronous orbit uh, above the equator. So that meant it was always on station to provide line of sight communications between Europe and North America. So early bird, this didn't have a battery and worked only when its solar panels were exposed to the sun. Look, it was in 1965. Technology was so advanced then. Then came uh, the launch of uh, Intelsat 3 in 1969 created a global TV and speech communication network that spanned from Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Oceans. So the, int in the introduction of multi-beam antennas in the 1980s uh, brought new improvement in the efficiency as the satellite power could now be concentrated on small regions of the Earth. So making it possible small aperture or coverage area, lower cost ground stations. Then the capacity like the number of simultaneous television and speech channel carried grew as well. So how satellite actually work? This is the satellite. This is the uplink station. Uplink means sending up. This is the downlink station means getting something from the up. And this is the footprint of the satellite. Uplink is shown like this. Downlink is shown like this. So this was the geostationary or geosynchronous. The Earth station sends message in gigahertz range that is uplink. Uh, the satellite receive and transmit signal back that is downlink, and other Earth station receive message in useful strength area, which is which is the footprint area. So we have satellite frequency bands and antenna. We all we have seen like dishes or bowls. The size of satellite dishes or antenna are related to transmission frequency. This is very important. The size is directly related to the frequency. So there is an inverse relationship between the frequency and wavelength. As we know, C is equal to L lambda. So as wavelength increases, 
the frequency decreases. So large antenna, that is satellite dishes, are necessary to gather the signal. This is C band, this is KU band. So most commonly used bands are the C band from 4 to 8 gigahertz and KU band uh, 11 to 17 gigahertz and then comes the car band. So C, Q and car. Uh, then KA band is from 20 to 30 gigahertz. Now we come to Leo. These uh, heights are around uh, 375 to 1000 miles means around 600 to 1000 kilometer. The revolution times is 90 minutes or 3 hours, it covers earth in 3 hours and advantages are they have reduced transmission delay because they are very near to uh, our earth and eliminates need for bulk receiving equipment. And the disadvantage is they have very limited coverage area because as the height increases the coverage area will automatically increase and they have shorter lifespan say 5 to 8 years. Uh, but geos may have up to 10 years there are subdivisions in this leo like little big and mega this little leo applications are you know pointed gigahertz range they are small and low cost vehicle tracking environment monitoring two way data communication these are also used for short narrowband communication the big leos applications 2 gigahertz and above so we are starting from point 0.8 now we have reached to 2 gigahertz and above this can offer global services which can be subject to regulatory requirements. This is used for technology devices such as high speed, high bandwidth data communication and video conferencing. They carry voice and high speed data services. The main uses are data communication and real time bosses delivery to handheld devices. Then comes the mega or the super uh, new applications around 20 to 30 gigahertz range. This mainly handles the broadband data. These uh, systems are optimized for packet switch data rather than the voice and they share the same advantages and drawbacks of other LEOs and are intended to operate with the intersatellite links to minimize transmission times and, they, and other uh, drop signals or what is. Hubble telescope, you might have heard about it, this is classified under LEO. The orbit is around 600 km, revolution time is again 100 meter. The speed is around 17,000 miles per hour. The concern is orbit decay from gravity and solar output. So during solar maximum, the densities at all altitudes are enhanced and the drag effects at, uh, on satellites are much larger than during the times of solar minimum. So they have a drag effect. Then uh, we have concern of space debris. The space debris, according to US Space Command, you see there are more than 8,000 objects larger than a soft ball of circling the glow of these 2000 hour satellites right maybe working or not 2000 satellites then we come to the other classification which is called MEO uh, middle earth orbiting this uh, MEOs uh, orbits between uh, altitudes of 5600 to 95000 miles and these orbits are primarily uh, reserved for communication satellite uh, then cover the uh, that cover the north and south pole so unlike the circular orbit of the geostationary satellite, MEOs are placed in an elliptical orbit. See, this is an elliptical orbit, not a circular orbit, orbit oval-shaped orbit. So approximately a dozen Earth orbiting satellites are necessary to provide continuous global coverage for 24 hours a day. You can see the diagram also, right? Now coming to GPS, what is it? A constellation of 24 satellites, we have 24 satellites. Actually, there are around uh, 54 satellites per se, but 30 are, 30 are operational. This GPS is a worldwide radio navigation uh, system formed for a constellation of 24 satellites and their ground station. They are constantly moving, making to complete orbits in less than 24 hours, and these satellites are traveling at a speed of roughly around 7,000 miles an hour. This GPS satellite, name is Navstar, manufactured at Rockwell, altitude around 10,900 uh, miles. And you know, the size orbital period this is 22 hours. Orbital plane is 50 degrees to the equatorial plane. The lifespan is around 7.5 years. And uh, current constellation 24 block to production satellites. And the spacing of the satellites are in such that a minimum of five satellites are in view for every point on the globe. So we require three satellites to point the position. How does it work? Satellites are actually reference points for location on Earth. 
The whole idea behind GS GPS is to use satellites in space as a reference point for location here on Earth. GPS satellites use a triangulation method uh, where the GPS receive, uh, receiver measures distance using the time uh, which tra time of travel of these radio signals. So by using triangulation, we can accurately measure our distance and find out the position of these satellites, position anywhere on the Earth. For example, if a particular satellite is around 11,000 miles above it, then we know that its radius is 11,000 miles. And basic calculation is only speed is equal to distance by time, or this velocity into test time is equal to distance, right? We use the speed of light as the velocity. So there are certain problems in the system also. Satellites are precise but are not perfect. Even though the satellite positions are constantly monitored, they can't be watched every second. So the atomic clock they use very very precise but still they are not perfect minute discrepancies can occur and these translate into travel time measurement errors and the signal may not actually get to the ground station first it may bounce out various objects before it gets to the receiver who uses GC? gps gps has a variety of application you know today everybody is using gps even mobiles have gps facility Diverse uses like uh, surveying recreational sea air, we have in India, we have uh, you know, Gagan also, basically an ATS and East project. Now coming to Geo, orbit in uh, synchronous uh, this uh, with the Earth's rotation, this is Geo. From the ground to the Earth appear fixed around 23,000 miles or 36,000 km, coverage is 40% of the planet per satellite. This is huge. What are the basics of geo? Geostationary satellites are commonly used for communication and weather observation. The typical service life expectancy of a geostationary satellite is around 10 to, 10 to 15 years. So because geostationary satellites circle the Earth at the equator, they are not able to provide coverage at the northmost and southernmost latitude poles. So geos and weather, the altitude is chosen so that it takes the Satellite 24 hours to orbit the Earth once, which is also the time of rotation of the Earth. So this produces the cloud animation you see on this TV. So can, this can take images approximately every every minute, you say. So there are certain facts about geos you must know. The instruments on geo are designed to last for three to nine years. Measurements that are taken in the form of electrical voltages that are digitized and then transmitted to the receiving station on the ground. An instrument usually have a small telescope or antenna, a scanning mechanism, and one or more detector that detect either visible infrared or microwave radiation. This is Geo's uh, satellite are positioned every four to eight degrees, and approximately three hundred Geo satellites are in orbit. You see, you have an ionosphere, and these are the satellites, and these are the receivers. There are certain pros and cons of geos. Advantages are weather images can be displayed, television broadcast, uninterrupted, use of track major development such as hurricanes 24 hours a day. Disadvantage, it takes longer for the signal to get the earth and back to the satellite and it increases difficulty of telephone conversations. And geos are not positioned in the farthest north and south orbits. So geos they provide image of nearly one third of the Earth's surface every 23 minutes with four kilometer resolution. That is, you get 40% uh, of the coverage. So while the US maintains and operates its geos in uh, European uh, community served by the uh, European Space Agency, ESA, Meteosat satellite, and Japan with GMS satellite. 